gas training. My name is Alan Hart and today we've got a very special um, very special video for you. It's from an ideal boilers engineer and it's the it's the fault code L2 on the ideal logic and the ideal Vogue combi boiler and it's a very detailed training video and it's going through the full how to check for the L2 fault for flame um, rectification um, or testing it all with multimeter also testing the components as well afterwards so that's near the end so it's a really really good video is this uh, very very special so if you could please put some comments below like share and if you've got any more videos that you want to do with ideal boilers again put some comments below and hopefully the the ideal engineer will help us with them as well and if you're an engineer a gas engineer from any of the brands if you want to send any videos in then please feel free to do so i will have my whatsapp details below so yeah let's uh, let's go and have a look at this video this video is for gas safe registered and trainee gas engineers under supervision please comply with the current regulations at the time Hello again. Um, in this video, I'm going to talk about flame rectification, flame detection, uh, ionization. Uh, all descriptions pretty much mean the same thing. Um, and what that is, it's actually um, the confirmation of the presence of a gas flame at the burner within the combustion chamber and the constant monitoring of that flame. Um, on this boiler, the Ideal Logic and the Ideal Vogue, um, if you have an issue with flame detection, you will probably get uh, a display either displaying L2 or ignition lockout. And today, what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to test, de um, diagnose and repair the fault, if you do have this fault. Ignition lockout and L2 can be um, other things, block condensate, uh, no gas, um, can be a few different things, but we're going to assume you have checked that there's gas present, uh, the gas valve's opening, you can check that with your digital manometer or water gauge. Um, the igniter unit is creating 20,000 volts and the spark electrode is indeed sparking. The boiler is igniting but distinguishing almost straight away and if that happens um, the boiler will cease operation and try to ignite again four more times, total of five attempts and it will then lock out on L2 or ignition lockout. If you are getting this scenario, <coughs> the chances are your issue is going to be in this area which is the flame detection probe or lead. I'm going to show you how we test, diagnose and repair this fault. How detection, flame detection, flame rectification, ionization works on this particular boiler um, is that the PCB board will send a 130 volts AC signal up the lead to this probe at all times. When a flame is present, um, the small, tiny electrical charged ions in the gas flame will then convert the AC signal to a very small DC signal back down the probe, back down the lead to the circuit board, confirming that there is, in fact, a flame there. Um, the boiler <coughs> has about a second to detect the flame. If it cannot detect the flame, it will cease um, operation and try again. So now what we're going to do, we're going to go through the steps on how we check and test this particular function. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my multimeter and we're going to test to see whether indeed the circuit board is sending the 130 volts 
AC voltage up the lead to the probe. Right, okay. I've got my uh, multimeter set ready. We've got it set on voltage AC. As you can see there, uh, what we do to first check the circuit board is indeed sending the power up to the detection probe. So if you can see here, on the probe itself, there's a rubber boot between the lead and the probe with a hole in it. What we do, we put one of our multimeter probes in that hole, make sure it's actually touching the probe. And <clears throat> our other end, we're going to either touch the neutral or the earth on the mains incoming voltage supply to the boiler. Doesn't matter what you touch, neutral or earth will give you a reading. So if we put this on now, I'll touch the neutral and if we observe the multimeter, we can see there's 127 volts AC. <clears throat> that is being sent from the circuit board up that lead to that detection probe at all times. We need to establish that this is there first, otherwise you know, none of the other operation can take place. If this is there, that's great. Uh, we can determine that this board is doing its job and the lead indeed should be in good order. Um, if it's not there, you'll need to investigate why that is. Could be a fuse on the circuit board, it could be a power problem. Um, could be a couple of different things, but we need that there. That should always be there first. So now we can confirm that is being sent from the circuit board we need to determine if the detection probe is doing its job and converting the signal and sending it back down to the circuit board when a flame is present. Okay, so what I've done, I've set up this test. It's um, quite difficult to do with one pair of hands and holding a camera. So what I've actually done to set up this test is again, I put one of my multimeter probes in the rubber boot, touching the detection probe. And the detection lead that comes from the probe back to the circuit board, if you can see here, it's got a disconnection point. There's a little clip that clips the, this, this lead that runs back to the circuit board. Is you disconnect the lead at this point and you put your other probe from your multimeter in the lead the piece of the lead that runs back to the circuit board because effectively we are making the circuit so the power is going to run down this lead through our multimeter back down this lead to the circuit board so we are creating the circuit if you plug it into this side you're not going to create the circuit and you're not going to get a measurement or the boiler won't even ignite so make sure it's this piece that you plug your multimeter into and now we've got it set up because we're looking for a DC signal back from the probe to the circuit board we now set our multimeter to microamps which is this symbol here and as you can see 0, 0.0 microamps because we are getting no demand what we're looking for we're looking for a reading of minimum gas rate which is ignition rate of about 1.5 microamps when the boiler first initially fires up if it detects the flame and as the boiler, the circuit board recognizes there's a flame there, it will then increase uh, the fan speed via pulse width modulation signal, which then will increase the flow of gas, which will then increase the burner pressure. So from 1.5 microamps to a maximum burner pressure, of, say around about 12-ish microamps. So if we say 12 microamps is maximum burner pressure and 1.5 is minimum burner pressure ignition rate. We want to see 1.5 microamps minimum for this to detect the flame so what I'll do now 
I'll call for heat and we will see what we get. Here I am at my heating programmer. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to call for heat. Had to do one. You should see a little red flame appear. There we go. There we go. Boiler is initializing. It detected the flame. As we can see, that worked pretty well. Once we start to ramp up uh, fan speed and gas pressure, we should see the micro amps increase. There we go. Here we go, the boiler's ignited. The fan speed is increasing. Micro amps is increasing. This is the signal <coughs> from the flame. We are effectively monitoring the gas flame within the burner right now. And this is the signal being sent to the circuit board via the probe and lead. This is the electrically charged ions moving down the lead. If I decrease the potentiometer to the hot water temperature on the boiler, you'll see, you can hear the fan speed reducing and you can also see the microamps decreasing. So, what we can determine from this now, if we can say 12 microamps is maximum burner pressure, 1.5 is minimum burner pressure, we can tell that the burner is not on the pressure if you will the fan speed isn't up to its maximum and I'm turning it down you can see that decreasing so we are effectively monitoring the ions in the gas flame right now but turn it back up again you can see the micro amps increasing again so that shows me that that, that detection probe is working properly and it's detecting the flame if you are not getting 1.5 microamps minimum, the boiler will just cease to ignite. And like again, it will cease to operation and it will try to do this five times. And if not, it will go to L2 or ignition lockout. I'm going to show you now what we can test when we think the detection probe is faulty or full of carbon I'm going to show you how we can check and test and confirm that indeed it is not working properly okay so now we're going to assume that we've um, tested the probe within the boiler we're not getting the right reading microamps wise We've removed the probe from the boiler and we can do another test now to confirm whether or not this probe is any good or not. So what I've done, I've removed the probe and the lead because you need more than one hand to do this really. So how I would set this up, I would put again one side of my multimeter um, probe in this harness this is a probe i removed from a boiler a couple of weeks ago if you can see that on the probe it's full of carbon and this just to show you the difference is one i've taken out of my van which looks a bit better so how we can check this again we can set our multimeter up onto we can put it on the buzzer this time we'll put the buzzer on just for which is that one there and if we touch any part of this probe with our multimeter 
we should be getting an audible sound there which is a you know a reflection of electrical conductivity continuity um, you know a connection if you will and we're not getting nothing if we try now on ohms a good connection would be less than one ohm again if we touch you know we're getting mega ohms which is a very poor connection um, really really poor connection less than one ohm would be an indicator of continuity or electrical conductivity so I can assume from that that this probe is not very good what I'll do if I can I'll just take it out and I'll put in <laughs> sorry about this I'll put in now the one out of my van again I'll put it on buzzer and I'll touch all the way down this probe as you can hear everywhere I touch on there I'm getting continuity and good connection if I put the multimeter to ohms less than one ohm Touching it probably. There we go. It's just I can't get a good touch on it. Come on. There we go. One point seven. Well my leads read one point two, so We've got to take that into consideration when we so that's another way to check whether or not we've got a problem with this detection probe um i took this out of an eight year old boiler which had never been cleaned on a service and you can see the difference between that will not conduct a current and send the information back to the circuit board that indeed there's a fault that one however will now you can clean this on a service um, you can use a, a little um, wire brush or a bit of scotch but I've seen people use a file but I think it's a bit a bit hard you can normally clean this carbon off and stop a fault occurring but uh, if it's gone too far then you'll need to replace it um, the part number for the logic harness itself, which you shouldn't really have a problem with, but if you do, it's 175604. And the detection electrode is 175592. This is the same um, test and process that you would use for an ideal Vogue as well, but this is my boiler. This is an ideal logic and I hope I've showed you how to determine a fault with a detection, ionization, rectification probe and how you can rectify that. So I hope you like this video. Thank you for watching. I might try and do some more if I get the chance. Thank you very much to the engineer from Ideal for sharing that video with us. It's always tricky when you're trying to do a video when you're working on a job obviously you've only got you've only got one pair of hands you've got a phone and then you need two hands for your multimeter you, you always struggle with multimeter anyway so thank you very much for taking the time to to share to share the information with us if you've got any plumbing or gas videos that you want to send in please send them in on my whatsapp and as always if you want me to mention your company or whatever websites etc then just let me know um yeah thanks very much and thanks for, to everybody who watches likes shares etc thank you